Waking Up From Work podcast. My name is Dave Swillam. Let's get ready to hustle. Hello, people, and welcome back to the Waking Up From Work podcast. This is your host, Dave Swillam, and today you're listening to episode number 34. Thank you guys for hanging out. This was another live episode out. We did it with Exeter Drumworks in their woodworking shop, so we actually set up two different stands and just stood in the middle of this sawdust patch and uh, were surrounded by drum shells, which is like my dream and talked about him leaving his job to start making drums and start making a physical product. We talked to Horizon Active a little bit on episode 29 about creating a physical product and having it sent out, but I also wanted to follow that up with talking to someone about actually using your hands to create that physical product for every single one of them. So you're talking about a custom drum company making boutique small quantity, small batch. And I wanted to get that perspective in the mix as well. And, uh, you know, as a drummer, I can't really say no to being able to interview a custom drum maker, right? So forgive my uh, sleepy voice. I have been recording for literally 28 hours in the past, like 48, less than that, like 40 hours with my band to do a new EP. So we slept in the recording studio the past couple days and I am fried after a lot of drinking, a lot of recording and playing and writing and not a lot of sleeping. I am in need of recuperation. So after this episode gets burnt and sent out, I'm going to head to bed so I can tackle this week effectively. Um, I do want to thank you guys. If you want to support me, Right now, I do have a Patreon page up. I will include in the show notes. I've got a couple goodies there that I'm going to get more info for you guys out with a video. I'm just aiming to try to cover my overhead expenses for the year each year. That would be super sweet to make it so it doesn't cost me anything to have this exist for you guys. If you want to do a completely, completely free way to support me, leaving a review with a little write up on iTunes is actually a huge win for me. It helps the podcast get found. So if you're finding value in it, you know, something as simple as a share on anything, a subscribe on anything, or a review on anything goes a long way for me. And I can't explain how much I appreciate it from you guys. So check out the Patreon. If you're interested in supporting further than that, do that. If you want to be a good ass person, you're finding value in what I'm doing and you want to help me out right now. Or uh, if you ever need any music or audio produced, head over to crawlspaceaudio.com and I would love to help you out with your project. Let's dive in. Let's talk making drums. Let's talk small business and a boutique brand that you make. Thanks. All right, guys. Welcome to episode number 34 of the Waking Up From Work podcast. This is your host, Dave Swillam. Today, I am hanging out in a old church, which is now a, furniture what would you call shop. it? Yeah, yeah a shop. shop. Yeah. Wood shop. <laughs> With furniture Jeff shop. from uh, Exeter Drum Works, which is a custom drum manufacturer out of, right now we're in Kingston, but it will be Exeter. Start, starting in December, everything will be out of Exeter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, I don't know, I, uh, I don't know, we've been doing a bunch of music related episodes lately, and my background, like I was telling you earlier, is in drumming, and then- right. I was telling you, like I was talking to Jeff earlier, for anyone that knew like SJC back in the day, like I grew up at these shows and I started seeing these custom kits after I had had like some of the more stock kits forever. I was like, I need those. And then when I got older, my like taste changed, but I I still like plan on getting a, uh, like a nice custom kit when I have my own space for my recording studio. I was like, saw you on social and uh, I was like, that guy is literally seven minute drive from my house making sick drums. Perfect. I, I have to talk to him. So. Awesome. Welcome, man. Thanks yeah, for hey. letting me hang out in here. Absolutely. It's great to have you over here. Uh, it's only going to be for another couple of weeks, but, uh, 
But yeah, it's a little warmer than the new shop right now. I'm still putting up insulation in the new shop and uh, working on heating it. So okay, that'll all be done by the end of this month. But it's not right now, and I didn't want to put didn't want to put you in that situation. That would <laughs> I appreciate that. I uh, I'm a northern boy, but I uh, I'm still a, a wimp when it comes to the outside. Yeah, I don't know. We're a few cheeseburgers short of enjoying that time <laughs> yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 not not good. Uh, yeah, but it will be. It's good. It, it it's getting there. Nice. Yeah. Do you want to, um, just for people that don't know Exeter Drumworks, you want to run us through like, where did, where'd you guys come from? How long have you been around? Like who, who's, who's Exeter Drumworks? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Exeter Drumworks is essentially, uh, just me and uh, a couple of my best friends who help me out on occasion, but it's, it's mostly just, uh, me. My name is Jeff. I, I I'm from Exeter. I, uh, no way. Yeah. Born and raised. Born and raised in ex. Born in Exeter Hospital. Raised in the trailer park. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, dude. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've been building drums for a few years now. Uh, I was tired of seeing all of these uh, Ludwig drums saying they were you know classic exotic, and uh, when it was really just a paint job with a veneer over the outside of a maple snare drum. Yeah. Yeah, and I really wanted to hear what that exotic wood sounded like, so I just went hard into figuring out how to make drums it's it is tough out there where like there's so many brands that they price themselves and market themselves as like a very high quality and you're like why did i just pay like eight thousand dollars for this kit it's when it comes to it's kind of materials you're really paying for all of the marketing that you see when you're paying when you're paying eight thousand dollars for a kit you're paying not for the quality of the kit and the amount of hours that went into the labor on that kit. 99% of the time, because there are a few of the big companies that will go real hard and try and hit a home run, but normally they're going to charge five figures for that. Yeah. Um, 99% of the time, you're looking at a kit that's, if you tried to build it yourself, you could do it for a quarter of the price. I believe it. Yeah, it would take you a year to do it. But you could build it for a quarter of the price. And, and I mean, if you want to sacrifice all of your personal free time and relationships and friendships and having fun, you can totally do By that. all means. If that's worth yeah. the extra, you know, <laughs> if that's worth the extra six grand to you to just go buy it in the store and, you know, not have any connection to it. It's, it there are a lot of us out there who are making beautiful, custom, handmade drum shells and... uh we're out there. We're just not spending all the money on advertising that you're paying Pearl, right. Ludwig, and Tama to build you an inferior product. I didn't. In yeah, when like when we started talking earlier, you just kept naming off people. You're like this person in in Goffstown, this person in you oh know, yeah, like, so he, create, all these places. Kevin like, Feeney, creative percussion out of Goffstown. He's 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 making amazing auxiliary percussion. If you're buying Gibraltar beaters and and cheap hardware yeah you, you you're wasting your time especially if you're in southeast new hampshire you you got to go over to uh, mother's music company in pelham and check out the creative percussion stuff or just reach out to creative percussion directly on instagram or facebook another great one who's super local is uh Vigent drums out of rochester and he's a steam bender so he does a little bit of a different thing than i do hmm. i make stave drum shells which is like a if you think about a uh, old whiskey barrel that's yeah. a stave drum shell. The way that it's pieces of wood placed. Vertical and then pieces curved of through. wood or even horizontal. I've done both. Uh, but normally vertical pieces of wood that are rounded after they're all glued together side by side. Okay. Steam benders take a piece of wood, put it in a steam box, and then fit it around a mold. And they're so actually, round. They're, are they, yeah, they're b- taking they're that one piece. bending that wood. And bending that wood. Right, around. So it's a horizontal grain direction. And there's barely any glue there's only one joint in a, in a steam bent shell what are like what's like the joe schmo drum set like how is that created a joe schmo drum set uh actually is surprisingly enough started off mostly in new hampshire we have the keller factory in nashua yeah, keller i know keller uh keller drum shells make up a massive amount of the market um still still um wow because i mean as as a few D, I mean, DW used to use Keller shells, and now they build their own shells out in California. Yeah. Uh, but that business has all been picked up by these small business, these smaller companies who are growing by using cheaper, you know, cheaper built, still good quality, but still good New Hampshire quality. I'm not going to knock a New Hampshire company like yeah. Keller. Yeah. Um, 
but they're just i've heard i've heard that shell before i've heard enough of that maple ply shell over and over and over again and it just doesn't sound interesting to me anymore so i i I really value the companies who are going out building their own shells or sourcing from a small shell builder like cask out in uh out in oregon i believe cask drum company is uh they make amazing steam bent shells as well uh, and he does some crazy exotic stuff uh dale bidgen in rochester is more of a uh more of a local local woods bender so if you want the new hampshire stuff the new hampshire species the stuff that grows around here he 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 bends that kind of stuff very cool yeah very, i'm always very cool. into like repping new hampshire hard oh, absolutely. you know like absolutely. all my artwork and everything that i usually have done for bands or whatever i'm always like contracting people from here to make but definitely i mean there's so much talent here you know and it, it, you don't have to go you don't have to go to California to find a fantastic handmade drum. You can get one in New Hampshire. You know, you don't have to go. Oh, where is it? Oh, brain fart. It's gone. That's okay. It's okay. We don't care because we know. care about New Hampshire. <laughs> That's what we were saying. <laughs> he doesn't even talk about it. No, it's no I know. Where, where do they do good things? I don't know. New Hampshire. They Just do New good Hampshire. Stuff in Send New them Hampshire here. In general. Right. Exactly. So, so three years ago, you didn't make drums at all. No, three years ago, I was... Um, How did that even happen? How did you go from whatever you're doing and then be like, I need to make drums, and then you make drums? Like, How does exact, that happen? I, I bought a uh, Ludwig Classic Maple Black Limba. Okay. Quote, unquote, Black Limba. Yep. That was 11 plies of maple with a Black Limba veneer <laughs> on the outside of it. So you're not hearing that at all. You're, it's literally just a classic maple ply drum shell from Ludwig with Ludwig lugs on it, you know, and I, I felt cheated by Ludwig for that. I was just like, if you're going to call it an exotic drum shell, then it better be an exotic drum shell, not a fake, you know, not, yeah. not a pretender. And they're, they're not, they're not, they're not bullshitting anybody. It, 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 it's, it's a, uh, it, they don't say it's not, you know, a maple shell. They say it's a classic maple shell with an exotic veneer, but that's not exciting at all you know I yeah i don't i don't need to hear that again so i i was a little butthurt and decided <laughs> well let me let me get on youtube and see what it takes <laughs> to make a shell and see see what it takes to actually make one of these shells that they can't seem to figure it out down there in north carolina yeah and uh and so um i just buried myself in youtube for a little bit and uh, a few deep old internet forums uh where a bunch of uh the old fart first first uh guard of uh drum building in the early 2000s left all of their comments uh and and i built uh, a variation of what's called a coco jig and other other drum builders will know what i'm talking about if they hear me talk about that but it's it's just the way that the jig is set up to sit on top of a router table and round the outside of a drum shell that's been glued up okay right um so i i started to build that and i started buying equipment first thing so that I would be committed okay. and not be able to back out. I was like, well, no, if I've spent a few hundred dollars on equipment, then I won't be able to just say, ah, uh, can I swear? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, yeah. uh, fuck it. I don't, don't want to fucking, I don't want to <laughs> do that shit. You know, I, 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 I had to be locked into it. So I started buying equipment and I started buying lumber. And, uh, and you're like, I've got this lumber that kind of sucks to have around, right, exactly. but it would so be I awesome if that was drums. So I started, I just started doing it as, as quickly wow. as possible with a pretty subpar table saw at first. The first drum shell that I built, uh, was absolutely gorgeous, but I broke it in a terrible accident several months later while finishing it out. And, oh. uh, the table I, saw? No, the the shell, the first oh. shell I ever built. Yeah, no, that table saw was just a junky Ryobi table saw. I ended up giving to my brother to take up to Maine, but uh, but the joints on that probably weren't as good as they are now uh, because it broke really easily when it hit the floor. And I've dropped plenty more shells since then, and they don't they don't want to break, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. they go through. They have to. They go through hell on the road. Yeah. Start people start. Absolutely. Uh, touring life, it, I mean, plenty of people tour with stave snares. Um, they've, stave snares have been around for 20, 30 years, thanks to Brady out in Australia. Mm. And uh, have you ever, you ever seen any Brady drums or played any Brady drums? No. Brady's the granddaddy of the stave drum, Chris Brady from Australia. And uh, he, uh, I want to say it was like 84, 85, something like that is when he made his first drum shell. 
Um, and sure. he, he's known in the in the community as the the legendary stave drum builder. You know, the the granddaddy. He's like the one. Yeah, he's the guy. Um, and he's he's dealt with some health issues recently, and their their building is on hiatus. But uh, so yeah, I made the first one that broke, and then um, after that, I just I I said, okay, well, I need better equipment. And uh, I was already in here, so I was using all of this stuff. And then I started stress testing my shells, and everything was coming up lock solid. So I knew it was just, well, I made that one on the Ryobi, you know. <laughs> that, <laughs> that may have been destined to fail. Uh, so, so, yeah, when it, when it, right now I'm moving shops into a new shop in Exeter, and I'm outfitting all that space with my own equipment. But now I've got three years of experience knowing which equipment to buy and which equipment not to buy. Brand sure. new isn't necessarily the best. You know, I've got a 40-year-old Canadian-made Delta Rockwell jointer in the back of my truck right now that I'm ecstatic about that was $300 cheaper than a brand new comparable unit would be and is built 10 times better because it's all cast all the time. iron parts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's super, I mean, indicative of that time period where, right. like, you buy things like... Usually, a lot of things today you can buy cheaper, but they'll be replaced like very frequently. Yes. Whereas you can buy things back then, now, right? Used, yeah, and they still, still way work, cheaper, still working and they the will, way that like, they last were for a long time, twenty years ago. And then you can usually repair them with like machine machinable parts versus some type of electronic exactly. that you're just like screwed. Exactly. We've so, got this. We've you. got a huge jointer over our back sh- over my back shoulder right here and it's it it will do massive boards. But the blades are, you know, this thick. They're 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 only a few millimeters thick. Sure. The blades on this one out in the truck are monster are monster they're like destroy walls quarter inch thick knives on this jointer so they can be sharpened over and over and over and over and over again by a local blacksmith you know like you you don't need to be buying the biggest and the best and the most brand new when they were getting it right 40 years ago so it's kind of nuts the way you said that that happened because you're pretty much like you get a drum you're just like pissed and like super burnt about it absolutely you're like i need to make things because this is bullshit yeah and then you start making things and then you're like oh well i'm gonna make more things yeah i've, been, then- <laughs> I've made a couple now and 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 as soon as i made a couple of shells i, I didn't want to do anything else uh i had a really really good solid career track job kind of thing going on you know i was working at uh at um, a tech company uh, locally, and uh, they were great to work for. Yeah. Awesome people, and uh, I just realized I, I was—I had been there for a couple of years, and I was just like, I felt it. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't have any issue with the work. I don't have any issue with the people. I just don't want to be here anymore because I want to be making. Drums. You just see eight hours where you're like, I'm not an unhappy person those eight hours, but I want it to be doing like, this thing. Right. It feels like a waste. Like for I'm those not eight actually, hours, I'm not actually creating anything yes you know like it's like yes i'm helping somebody else realize their vision but what's my uh, i have a vision now and i need to focus on that i know exactly what you're literally know exactly what you're talking about right yes yeah definitely yeah so i i I gave them good notice and and uh uh helped hire my replacement i didn't get to train him but he was somebody i worked with previously and i recommended him and he he came through so i didn't leave them in the lurch at all but i i just left you know i I, I left and i said i i can always deliver pizza to make ends meet and just spend all of my other free time building drums i love that right yeah because that i mean you like you gave yourself something to protect yourself where you're you're you have a way to survive but you're you have to succeed you're like i have to succeed yeah yeah, you know, I, I, I made that it, choice. It's it's not that I have to succeed because like it's meant to be. It's like I have to succeed because this is what I want to do. Right. You know, like this is I, I I can't envision not making drums at any point. You know, uh, even even when I get depressed about it and it's just like oh well there hasn't been any business for three months. You know. Yeah. What am I doing wrong? It's like no, you're not doing anything wrong. You just don't have four million dollars a year to spend on advertising. <laughs> It's like you just got to sit and wait it out and bite the bullets and and just and just take it, you know. Yep. Um, because what else is there to do? This is what I want to do. I love it. Yeah. So this next spot that you're going to, like, what what do you see is like you've you know you've taken the jump. You've been out here for like how long have you been out where you were away from the job, doing just drums and 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 
side uh, work? Um, that's been um, two years, eight months, something like that. Okay. Two years and eight months, um, almost three years on that. I, I stayed at the job for a few more months before I realized uh, that I needed to go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been two and a half years at least of just uh, just drums just and going after it, just drums and side side jobs. Yeah. So so what? So you're moving to this new location, and what do you see as like the future for you? I know that there's some things that we talked about that you can't talk about. I'm really, certain things right yeah, now for, yeah, on the horizon for you. There's but. some really really cool collaborate collaborations coming up for me um, that I, that uh, I'm hoping will all shake out um, with some other companies. Um, and uh i also the new location is just awesome uh there's a uh arts organization in exeter called team town exeter arts and music yeah and uh it's it i've been a part of that for a while now and they actually uh purchased a uh, full kit and snare from me that's used at all team shows music shows no way yeah, it's like it's, the back line yeah like the, it's the, the back line they wow. purchased a back line kit it's all black limba wow which is a tribute to that being the first <laughs> that's it's really one of my favorites it's a really it's amazing i i wish wish ludwig would have just bought some some more <laughs> black limba plies and built some black limba ply drums because black limba sounds awesome the line is literally called like the ludwig hater yeah like I, and i don't i love ludwig is the thing that's what frustrated me so much about it was i was such a ludwig fan i'm a ludwig boy, and i was boy. like why would you let me down like this ludwig why does it have to be why just would you maple? do this to me right yeah and it's like all they do you is gave me these sweet do, huge kick drums right, exactly you gave me sweet acrylics it's either maple or mahogany or Oh, we did walnut for our 25th anniversary or something like that. You know, like it's just like, oh, oh God, please just do something different. Stop recreating the exact same drum over and over and over again. Have a thought. It's so funny because it's like that, that like pivot point for you. Like I feel like just from hearing your story a short bit when we talked earlier today, just rain through in your brand where like I... You were like, yeah, I make people kits like custom to what they want when they're like, I want all of these exact things. But then like... I just make things and then see how it sounds because I selfishly want to understand like, what does this wood from this ridiculous place do in this size? And then I put it up and people buy it. Right. I was telling you, I want to build, so you're like, you just make, I want to build every, make things I want, like a mad scientist. I want to build every single size drum shell from every single species. Cause I want to hear what every single one sounds like, you know, I really want to hear that. And then, and then I have my hybrid X series, which is, uh fusions which is fusions which is like unlimited variables unlimited like when you did that math variables. class in high school you and get, you have like the blocks of things that silly. mix because you can literally so i i have this concept god i have this concept for a shell that's just you know like 20 inches deep like like a 10 by 20 just to be silly with a snare on oh, the bottom of it okay <laughs> right like 20 inches deep with 20 with each inch is a different species of wood just stacked on top of each other all the way down oh my god you know because it's it's doable why not do it if it's doable? You know, it's, yeah. sure it might not sound great, but somebody will get tickled by it. You know, and that's the idea. It, it it's music. It, music is art, and, you and never creating know. instruments is art. And you, you got to do stuff for different people, not just the set of people who has a wallet full of fucking money. Yeah, you know. You well, know? like we like I was saying to you, like I'm a studio guy, right? So I look for like it's not even just percussion instruments anymore i just look for things that create sounds right right like like in this metal record that i'm working on right now there's an anvil in it right there's literally an anvil with a hammer (laughs) like with a snare drum and a breakdown and um you imagine having a tour with an anvil uh, (laughs) you make the vocalist carry that shit okay you make the vocalist carry that shit you ever managed to make a vocalist carry anything (laughs) i I was the vocalist (laughs) and uh maybe it's because i was a drummer first (laughs) <laughs> i was a drummer first so i had unreal sympathy oh. for everyone in the band so like when i when i was uh when i was the front man for a hardcore band i yep. still used to carry in all the drummer shit with him because i was like dude oh, that's very sweet you of know you. you're the one in a hundred right there. i'm the one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know but it's because i was there man yeah but um but yeah i mean i i look for things that create sounds that no one has in a sample library you, or no one has uh like the ability to to just plop into something oh absolutely which is your it, same reason for making drums that are different because and just to pump up another new reason. hampshire company again creative percussion that's exactly what he does 
with auxiliary percussion. He's like, these he things together make a sound. The best noise making stuff. Like, I, I, that's the best way I can describe it to you. It, like, everybody's oh, got to go check his stuff. I'm going to, yeah, I am. It's awesome. It's, and it's so accessible. Like, his stuff you don't have to wait a couple of months for, like you do a custom build with me. His stuff is ready to go, ready for sale. You wow. Know? I do have seven snare drums for sale through Mother's Music Company in Pelham right now. Awesome. Yeah. So there is stuff out there available retail, and people don't have to wait the three month waiting period, you know? Yeah. And that's just, that's only reflective of me moving into a new shop over the next month and needing that time to get prepared, you know, get, get yeah. back into the full You're, swing you're in motion. So like, you're like, let me get some inventory out there for if people want this, that way they have a way to get it without me not being available to even like talk or do anything. Oh like yeah. That, yeah. That and, I, and I'm definitely available to talk and take orders and stuff. And I'm being very upfront with everybody I'm in a transition period. You know, like I just took an order a couple of weeks ago for a uh, custom snare built out of uh, Eki wood, which is Congolese rainforest wood. This is reclaimed out of a bridge down in Athol, Mass. How, how did, so that seems so obscure to me. How does that wood, how do you even find that, first of all? And then, like, like how do you get this wood so it was on. from a bridge before it's chucked into a dumpster or something, and you get that one person to be like, don't do that? There was a drummer, the, the person who was on site, was a drummer. Is, is the drummer <laughs> who's ordering the snare drum. Wow. And that's the thing. He wanted to save as much of it as he could because he knew that it was special. And it is. Uh, to my knowledge, there are only two other builders who have built with it. There's John Hammond over at Serenity over in the UK who just makes fantasy piece, amazing handmade, hand lathed drums. They're not even straight. They're not straight walls. He carves designs into his shells and they're just amazing. Yes. Um, but there's so much money <laughs> for, for very good reason. Um, so he's built with this species. And then uh, I believe uh, Ian Hammer from Savage Custom Drums has built with this species before as well. It's not an incredibly visually striking species, but it's one of the top three or four hardest, densest woods in the world. It mm. sinks. It's not a floater wood. It will sink to the bottom if you drop it in the water. Low, will it be low tones? Um, no, Thuds. no, the denser... The denser a wood is, actually, the higher frequency it's going to vibrate at. Okay. Uh, which is why that quartz crystal, that, that drum from Cask, drum, drum craft, has that ridiculous crack and that ridiculously high frequency sound is because quartz crystal is so dense and so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I actually, oh, that reminds me. There's a, uh, this uh, guy in Australia, Convict Drums, who uh, makes uh, granite shells what carved granite how shells. is that not done here um i need to go talk to like integrity stone or somebody soon yeah just to see if i can get what uh, does a granite like the entire thing is made of granite the shell is made of granite what does a granite drum sound like very 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 high pitched yeah oh my god yeah very very high pitched and it's not it's it's not gonna that's resonate. not a touring drum no 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 that is not the touring no, drum that you no, want you don't want to carry that around and you don't want to drop that once either that's because, gone oh man it's gone if you drop it you wow know? yeah but uh, i mean there's a guy in uh Man, I feel terrible. I can't remember his name, but there's a gentleman out in France who's making glass snare drums on brass frames. Dang. Yeah, just just it's like pane glass windows for for shells. Huh. So yeah, it, there are, there are an outrageous number of things happening in terms of the small drum maker community. Yeah, I would be interested because because you're in touch with so many people. What do you see happening in the drumming industry right now in general where, like, me as a producer, right? Yeah. It's a 50-50 shot whether I'm working with an artist that's doing sample drums or acoustic drums. And me as a drummer, that bleeds into my production all the time where yeah. I'm, like, all the time I'm augmenting things with acoustic drums and things. What are you seeing in, like, in the market of people? Are you seeing different types of artists coming into drumming? Are you seeing different like businesses or entities in the music industry coming into acoustic drumming? Like what, what are you seeing in that field right now? I see from your perspective. I mean, I feel like 10 years ago we were seeing a lot of just a lot of drum companies just throwing triggers into shells, you know, like just so that they could keep up with the electro craze. And then I think DW yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Non-stop. DW all the time. I'm trying to think of the other one who was like Pearl did it. Um, I'm sure Yamaha. Yeah. Yamaha did it as yep. well. And um, I'm pretty sure most of those are still available as well. But uh, 
we're hearing more and more of like you know EDM producers being like, oh yeah, I mean, I sampled this particular instrument, and uh, there are a lot of. Uh, I have seen a lot of, uh, what is it, uh, like sample sellers. You know what I mean? Like people, people who have catalogs samples. of samples. They make samples and they just sell them. Um, those people are looking for the custom instruments. You know, they want because they want their samples to sound different from everybody else's. Yeah, sample. that makes perfect sense. Because I think about it like that's what intrigues me about the exotic wood. Like, so we'll definitely talk down the line. But, yeah, but. Every every producer and every studio and every artist for that point wants to have their own sound. Right. Right. So there gets to a point where you've heard Stephen Slate drum triggers enough times that you're like, I know the sound. Yeah. Right. Or or there gets to a time where you hear that. Um, like I use a Yamaha recording custom that I I honestly I I get a great sound of that I love, but right. it's not as unique as some other things that I could do where that's where I see the value in, in custom drum companies is, is giving you that ability to like get something that like literally no one else can have that right. drum sound that you get out of your studio. Right. Absolutely. Or from like, your, as you, you as an artist, right. Like, no like one can sample that. Um, I've got uh, one of my artists, Chris out of Stratum. He, he, the first drum I ever sold, like built and sold was a custom order for him. And it was a, uh, it was made out of copper beech from the tree that was in front of his childhood home. Wow. And I've built him two snares out of that now, and he has just started selling all of his... He had a big collection and of now snares. He's just, he's, of snares, and he's just started selling all of those off because he, he, he says nothing can compare to those two snares. They wow. have every single sound that he's ever wanted to hear in both of those snares. And, and so, wow. yeah, that's the thing. It's, like, it's, it's, it's just... Have you heard a Pearl reference before? Yep, I've heard a Pearl reference before. Have you heard a Ludwig Acrylite before? Have you heard a Superphonic? Yeah, that sounds great. They sound good. They sound good. I've heard it my entire life, and I don't need to hear it anymore because it, 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 at this point, it's lost any mysticism, any, any, any excitement that I got on a song. I, I, I can't get completely into new music and be like, yay, new music, because damn, I've heard that sample 8 million times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, like, someone who doesn't work in the business, like, it's not, they're not hearing the sound as, like, blatant as me and you. Like, we're right. like, if I hear something, God forbid, if I am watching a TV show and I hear a sound sample that's from Logic Pro's, like, free yeah. library, yeah. I will lose my shit. And oh, my yeah. wife's like, shut well, up. Here, Don't, so, doesn't matter. So you know what like, it is I'm for, like, I know that sample. Compa- so, so, like, people who aren't in the industry can understand <laughs> it. It's, it's like when you hear that scream that 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 free that free audio scream in a movie that should have had a way bigger budget than using that scream <laughs> in it like uh, i can't like uh what was it the the uh whatever that one where it's, it's like the, my uh, leg. It's, yeah it's the ah uh, real monster scream that, ah, yeah and they use it and it's just like no that guy definitely didn't do that because I've heard that scream since I was a little kid on oh, all kinds of different shows. I'm going to go try to find that and put uh, it in this podcast oh, man. episode. It's, 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 it's so, you'll hear it and just be like, oh yeah, that you guys scream. used that sample again. That one. Don't you, wasn't this like a $200 million budget, this movie? You guys used that sample again? <laughs> like, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, so, th- so that's the thing. It's like, if you've got... And and you'll notice that yeah, a, a lot of these big touring drummers are using like A and F drums now because they're expensive. Yeah, but they're the same thing you'd be spending on a touring kit from you know if you're buying like the the they the, charge the, the super same Yamaha you know kit, then you're going to be getting the same prices, and yeah. you know you're getting a handmade quality kit that fed a bunch of people because they're actually paying their employees a living wage, right? You know, and and took care of a bunch of people's mortgage and life. And, and you, you, you can't get that with other companies because, I mean, you just you, you don't get it from, from, a, from a big company, yeah. what you get from a small company and knowing what you're doing for people and not just one guy at the top who's got a big, big pocketbook. You know? I mean, that's something that's like a huge characteristic. Like when I'm looking at my show demographics, we are like. God, probably 80% age 24 to 35. Right. Like that is just what this show is. Right. And it's, and it's because we really talk about that like different American dream of like not, you know, 
the mansion and not the Lambo, but like I'm doing exactly what I want every single day. And look, that and, guy over there is too, and so is that guy, and so right. is she, and we're all getting there and everybody's doing well you right. know it's not yeah i've got the pool in the mansion and 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 uh fuck boy down there doesn't you know it's just no no i want fuck boy to do well too he's a guy he's a person and i want to just do i want to do what i want to do for i right. want to make drums all day right exactly right? but that same generation i also see we value locally sourced products and we really value things that are crafted absolutely like craft beer like higher higher valued food and things that are organic or locally sourced like farm to table restaurants 40 right? year old locally made woodworking equipment you exactly. know like that's the kind of thing that our generation is most inter- in, interested in is is the stuff that actually lasts not the throw away what is it throw away retail or whatever it is you know oh well i'll buy the new table saw it's gonna last four years before all the spindles die on it but uh then i'll just get another new one you right. know uh, it, it, I think our generation is picking back up on the no, buy the good one. Doesn't matter what kind of shape it is because the good one you can always fix and make better. You know, sure, yeah. So I, I, I definitely see, I definitely see that in in the in the anything custom and anything locally sourced or crafted, right? Um, I guess. Yeah, like, I'm sorry, I steered that towards like a, a different corner of that conversation, but yeah, the 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 local the locally crafted goods, you know exactly who's whose livelihood you're affecting when you spend your money locally, you know? Yeah. You're taking care of your neighbors. Not part of the machine, yeah, right? Exactly. It's, it's not going, you know, to some giant bank in Switzerland where it's going to get hidden so that I, they, the government can't get it, you know? And it's just, so it can't go to help people. And it's just, it's all taken care of when you stay local, you know? You know, when you, when you go buy local meat, you're taking care of the farmer. When you go buy a locally made drum, you're taking care of the drum maker. I, I care about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, a lot of these people, where they're either like thinking about starting a side hustle, or they're right in the middle of it, or they already got over the hump and they're where you're at, where they left and they're you know building. Yeah. Like, what went into that process of you know you were making drums at home? Like, what went into selling your first drum? Where you're like, all right, now I'm gonna not create it. Like, I remember for me, that was a totally different thing where, like, I knew for a long time that I wanted to do audio. Right. And then to get good at it, I made a bunch of, I I recorded a bunch of people for free for a while. Like, I recorded five, you know, five or to eight different EPs or records of, of bands and artists and of different things for free. Yeah. And put hours and hours and hours. And then... When I got paid for my first project, I didn't make shit. Yeah. Like, it broke down to, like, I think I did the math. It was, like, $4 an hour oh, or something definitely. over the project. Nothing. Yeah. Like, right? the, those two drums I was talking about, the uh, the two Copper Beach drums. Yeah. Uh, I, could, I charged him essentially the same money for both of those snare drums, but I lost so much money in terms of the hours I had into the first yes. one. Yes. Oh my goodness! And then the second one, the and then whatever money you have, more. you might have you probably put back into oh yeah equipment too. Absolutely. Right? As soon as I got paid for that job, I, I it was it was oh good. Now I can get you know I can I can build out a couple of drums for retail. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just like oh good, I'm going on Drum Factory Direct. I'm buying parts. I'm buying hardware. And then now I've got you know I've got uh, people who make lugs for me, and I get them handmade. I don't get them cast. You know okay. because I want if you're buying a handmade drum. You would like probably like to have handmade hardware on there as well, you know, is my thought process. Right, exactly. So I offer it both ways, but but I prefer to build them out with the handmade hardware on there. So what went into like that time where you're like like how did someone reach out to you proactively because they knew that you were working on stuff and say, Hey, would you make me a drum? Yeah. Can I, I had buy had a drum a, a or friend like- of mine built uh, a friend of mine built the Facebook page and the website and uh I I uh, I did the Instagram and through those essentially i mean the wix isn't free but it's not super expensive yeah that's what i do those through through those three sources it just started to attract you know people People. with interest and uh and that's how uh uh, a friend of mine uh a friend of mine now just somebody who noticed it on the page at the time but this uh guy adam frost i don't know if you know Adam. you might know adam he's in production too no um 
but he uh, he did all the videos for Drum Center Portsmouth for uh, a while cool. uh, for the past year or so. Uh, it's a new guy over there now. But uh, Adam recommended to Chris. He, he Chris had reached out to a few different people and said, "Hey, can you build with this material?" And what he had were sections of tree stumps. He had rounds, and the amount of work that went into turning those into dimensional lumber was outrageous. But oh I could tell God. that it was really, really meaningful to him to have a drum built out of the drum built out of the tree from his childhood home because they tried and tried to keep this tree alive. Yeah, um, and it just didn't make it and they had to take it down so he wanted the memory of that and he wanted to hear that tree you know and that's i mean thing. that's amazing a tree dies but then it's turned into an instrument and that instrument creates art creates art <laughs> mind blown second life for the tree you know, you know? So, so so that's it's just it's just res- that'd be like if i got a tat like with one of my tattoos and then my tattoo also made other things right exactly you know what i mean because right. the tattoo is meaningful enough right but like, but if it could also write beats to also for you, create yeah. things, well, I mean, that would be yeah. Oh yeah, but a it side would do, partner. It would do, yeah, if you could just, if you could just, oh, the tattoo, and I can just play it. I can play the tattoo. That's, that's our nice. next. That's our next joint business. Yeah. Is we're gonna find a like artificial, uh, you know. I, just need, I need a, I need an LED panel in this. I need an LED panel in this forearm. Can somebody do that? It for would me? require human testing. It'd be the most illegal. Oh yeah, so much, so much. But I mean never stopped anybody in this country from doing anything fair <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, but yeah uh, so the first ones came from so him drums and because not human you, testing yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know that's yeah, the next chapter the first, guys the first when, order came from chris uh just by word of mouth and from the internet you know um then you're in the game you're like i i sold a drum right exactly and then and then i've i've learned how to navigate instagram pretty well um I um, normally only spend money on ads when I'm trying to sell a drum yep. or if, uh, you know, I just, I have a new line that I want to introduce, but normally I just do one-offs. Uh, you know, I've only replicated a few of the snare drums that I've built. For the most part, I just built a different thing every time and I just keep bouncing from different thing to different thing to different thing and just building different drums, you know, building, building different instruments. So, yeah. Love it. So what went into, uh, like, you, you chose this Exeter location. I know that this one, you worked with someone and, and got your foot in the door and started going here. Like, what went into when you were deciding on your next location? Like, what things were you looking so out for to decide on that? the next location, oh, yeah. So I, yeah, I ran off on a tangent. We were talking about that earlier. So team, yeah, Town Exeter Arts and Music. Yeah, they bought that backline kit. So um, one of the guys who's, uh, who leads that organization is uh, Scott Ruffner. And uh, he reached out to me and said, hey, we've got this new, you know, it's like an art commune kind of location. It's over at uh, 60 Winter Street in Exeter. It's called uh, Exeter Station Properties. Uh, okay. The whole building is like it's, an art-based it's an, type it's of an, deal. It's an old factory building and a couple of outbuildings. And there's a couple mechanics over there. And there are... Uh, there is a machine shop, and there's a drawer box maker, a woodworker, and there's a glass blower, a couple of visual artists, a couple of photographers so far, and they're building out a whole other level right now with available spaces. Uh, so if you're looking for art space, they're in the range of, I want to say like 275 through like 600 a month for the spaces. That's yeah. super affordable. Yeah, they're outstanding. Especially for Exeter, dude. Like, they real that's the thing. Is like finding cow. a place in Exeter that was going to be affordable. Um like they've got they've they're small they're, they're small studios the places that uh they're building out right now, but you should uh you should reach out to Scott Ruffner or Exeter Station Studios cool. is what uh, they're changing the name to so- shortly here. Um it's an awesome awesome location and uh I just uh, I'm in one of like the material handling buildings outside. So one of the old like dock buildings where they used to store. I can't remember what this factory was, but where they used to store stuff out in the out in the side building, they just put it up there with a fork truck. And yeah. uh, so I'm insulating. I've almost finished the subfloor and uh, and uh, just getting getting ready for winter in that spot, you know. But uh, yeah, it's just it's getting more beautiful every day. They keep doing more maintenance on the property. Like they just re-roofed the building that I'm in with all that nice new like red uh, sheet metal roof there, you know. And it just and it's going to benefit you to be living in an arts community, right? I mean, literally, Being, like working this, in an arts community yeah. is, is awesome. You'll it just attract artists, is. yeah. 
and that's the thing like it, it inspires collaborations too you know i've got a couple i've got a couple of friends over there uh my buddy tyler door who's a glass blower um is outrageously talented and, and i've made a couple little pieces for him just like display bases and stuff like that you know cool. but it's it's really cool to work with a whole bunch of other different artists in the area just because you've got that whole buzz that whole whole artsy buzz and everybody's always thinking about something creative you yeah know? everyone's always trying to create something and it does lead to like like i'm a i'm an audio engineer right, right? but like i'm talking to my friend simon about like creating clothing yeah. And I'm talking to, I don't know, I, I always, like, you just, if you're a creator, you create. Right. And you just come up with these crazy ideas, and sometimes, or a lot of times, you come up with a crazy idea, and you're like, you know, tattoo instrument, you're, but, but, but you, but you re- meet people in artist communities that have abilities to guide you into how you could do something. Right. And then right. it starts other opportunities and everything. Yeah, exactly. I've been super into that lately, dude. I've been going around to, like, network more because i never really networked much yeah not not to the way that i've really enjoyed lately and it just opens doors to things that wasn't possible because you just made contact and explain your story with someone else that you wouldn't have and it creates these weird little roots to follow absolutely yeah like it's gonna be a good spot for you oh yeah yeah most definitely it's 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 just it's awesome so i'm really looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing who else ends up coming into the space you know there are so many more spaces available over there that i can't wait to see what it finally looks like uh i hope that eventually we're you know having having weekly or monthly you know shows out on the dock every every summer you know every spring summer and fall We'll see you know exeter's getting a little younger a little louder but there's still a little bit of an old guard there that isn't uh so friendly towards the music scene there's a there's a lot of change happening in new hampshire in different pockets I'm yeah because like sea dog has really been good about getting the live music it. going in exeter um ever since they took over the old loaf and ladle spot uh, yes they've done they've done live music in there and uh it's not you know, it can't be, they don't have the space really for full, full bands. I believe they do downstairs. They do. They have the space downstairs for full bands and they do the full band thing downstairs. I'm just spacing out. Yeah. Uh, I've been down there and watched full, full bands play. Well, but like, yeah, like that's before that, there was nowhere in Exeter that you could go book a gig. Right. Yeah. Everyone, everyone just head into Portsmouth. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But now what's happening is now Portsmouth is like ungodly to try to afford it's it's just rent in it's super saturated when you go people there are bouncing as, out as but still working you there know? yeah 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 when you go to portsmouth just for dinner it's super saturated with people and you know i mean exeter is busy but there's so much untapped potential like little nuggets of food places like vino avivo in exeter oh vino avivo in exeter is the finest dining i've ever eaten and it's this it's just this little hidden down an alley place where a consignment clothing store used to be. Perfect. And uh, they just make super, super, super amazing food. And they're a wine bar, too. Hell yeah. Th- All that sounds appealing to me. Play, oh, my. You need to go to Vino Avivo and just sit at the wine bar and have a couple of glasses of Lambrusco. Okay. Ridiculously good, dark, fizzy wine. Dark mm. red, fizzy wine. Super tasty. Dang. Um, it's just... They, they, the people who work in there have been in there have been in that restaurant like since they started. So it's all familiar faces every time you go in. Huh. Um, the head chef over there is a buddy of mine, Jackson Casey, who uh, I went to high school with, and he just makes outrageously good food. But yeah, so this is the thing: like it, Exeter is slowly growing as an arts community and culture center, and uh, the the Exeter Station Studios is just the next step in that progression. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Definitely. Cool, man. Well, I always ask people at the end of an episode, I ask them five questions. Awesome. And I always ask them to kind of just like, don't think too hard about it. Yeah. Answer however you think on it. Yeah. You know? um, the first question um, I always get kind of from this, but I always ask people like, what made it so like you're telling me where you're like, I was perfectly happy with what I was doing. Like things were cool, but I just like, I had to go do this like what is it do you think that made it about like making drums and finding this and getting into it that you're like 
I can't picture myself doing anything else w- with my life than this thing. Like, I have to do it. I honestly couldn't tell you why, because it made a lot more sense. If I had stayed at that company for just another year, that company was purchased by, uh, by a much larger company, and every employee got a massive payout and got to keep their jobs. Oh, <laughs> Massive payout. Yeah. I could have started this business with a ton of money and really done it right. But I couldn't stay there. I couldn't stay there at all. I felt called to do something else, and I had to do that. Yeah. I just couldn't be there, you know? Well, it, it, was, it was straight gut feeling and nothing else, yeah. I'm believing more in that every day where, like, I believe that, I believe that you have to make like the right decisions, like you still have to make business decisions. Right. So like, I don't believe in just like only gut where like you just do whatever. Right. But I do believe where like, like there's some stuff that I'll share with you listeners that's been going on with me over the past couple months. That's like kind of some bad shit, but like I, it, but I, for the first time reacted to it, like where like maybe five years ago I would have reacted like real bad and be like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, this is so unfair or whatever. Yeah. But like I had some very like stressful things come up and I literally without hesitation was like, okay, yep. whatever. Okay. Cause I, I do, yep. I do believe that there is a path that you're there. Like you are supposed to do, like there is some reason why you were not supposed to get that bonus to yeah. start like oh, in absolutely. a grittier spot or something. Absolutely. So like you're used to the hustle and like, you know, there's some right. reason why this stuff just recently happened to me so that I would face some things and, and, and not, you know, I don't know. Right. There's some reason why those things are supposed to happen. And, uh, I just firmly believe that and it's made it so I can maneuver things like quickly. Like I just get through bad shit. I'm just through it like way quicker than I ever was before. So I, I believe it, man. Yeah. Um, so say like you were talking to you five years ago, or you're talking to you when you're like contemplating doing Exeter drum works, yeah. right? What would you say to that you that was the worst thing that you did in the process or like, not maybe like a bad thing that you did, but you're like, Hey, if you were going to do this over again, I would recommend that you do this because it was kind of <clears throat> shitty to do. Maybe you shouldn't have uh, spent six months building cutting boards. Okay. Yeah. There was a six month period where I, I pumped out hundreds of cutting boards yeah. to keep, to, 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 to make some money. And uh, what a waste of time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's about it. Okay. That's about it. I still make them for friends and family and stuff. Were you I just flipping them do... on Etsy or something? No, no, no. Like at local retail stuff, you know, and it, it, like at, at shows and at uh, uh, Swag on Swayze, uh, which was an aw- is an awesome uh, little, uh, little uh, oh my God, flea market. And, while you were uh, doing the drum stuff? While I was doing the drum stuff. And I was, I was focusing more on the cutting boards because I thought that the money was going to come from there. Gotcha. And I hated myself for it. And I just kept lying to myself and saying, well, if I get enough money from the cutting boards, then I can really go hard at the drums. And the whole time I should have just been working on the drums and struggling. Dude, know? I think that's part of every business owner. Yeah. Right? Like you, you, uh, you get into it and you start niching back to the things that like, like you only have so much time. Right. There's so much that you have to do. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause I did the same thing where like when I started crawl space audio, that's my audio brand. I was like, I'm going to do live sound. I'm going to do recording. I'm going to do this and that and, like a bunch of different things. And then I realized how much I hated live sound. And so when I went out and did those gigs, I was like, I'm going to do live sound gigs so it can fuel the studio. I was like, this makes me so stressed. This makes my work in the studio worse. Cause I'm, I'm getting pissed that I have to pack up all this stuff right. like down at this other location. And, and so I just stopped doing live sound. Yeah. And yep. those, the and live sound like, yep, was my no. cutting boards, dude. Right. And I was like, I'm going to just do studio. Right. I'm just going to do recorded audio. Yeah. And it's just been better since then, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't bang out a whole bunch of cutting boards anymore either. <laughs> right. But I still do live sound gigs for friends. Exactly. You know? Exactly. People who deserve it can have whatever or, they or want. Or something yeah. like, you know, if it's the right cutting board, I'll go out. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Flip side to that. What is the um, what is the best thing that you feel like you've done in this process so far? Where you're like, hell yeah, definitely do that. Um, collaborating with other builders, uh, like the best things that I've done in the past three years have been uh, 
becoming friends with Kevin uh, Feeney from Creative Percussion and uh, Dale Vigent from Vigent Drums. Raising Water. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and and Chucky, Chucky Greenwood from uh, Mother's Music. You know, like those, those, the relationships that I've built. And then, I mean, like occasionally I'll chat with owners of other bigger, small brands and stuff like that. And, and, and those people mean an awful lot to me. And those relationships mean a lot to me. And knowing that I can reach out and be like, I was wondering about this. I have this thought. Is there something I could do about this? You know, and, and just having those people being able to actually converse with them and, and chat with them has been the best thing for the brand. And it's really kept my mental health in check. Yes. Having those people to be like, ah, oh, worst customer, worst customer ever, you know, and I just need to talk to you about this and they'll give me a different perspective on it. And, and, you know, and, and people and that know exactly what you down. do. Exactly. What, people what who have with. that exact same perspective. So finding, people with the same perspective in the same sort of industry, it, it was really important. That's for awesome. sure. Yeah. And, I, and we like, we talked about that earlier a little bit where we were like, we, we both agree with like you need, you, th- there's plenty for everyone. Yeah. Everyone is going to benefit by working with each other. Exactly. Right. If you're in the same business and you're like doing something to like sandbag someone else, like that's not beneficial to you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's like, so you with that other percussion creator, right? Yeah. People that have, want a snare drum, a custom snare drum, right. are probably the same crowd that wants some custom hand percussion. Exactly. So like it benefits, or even you buy one snare drum from here, you might want it from another place or that place because they got it there and they might want one from exeter Drumworks. exactly like there, you know? there are people who have hit me up and they're like hey i want a steam bent drum and i go well i don't really do that but my buddy dale does right. you know and I, I say i say you need to go talk to vision get a vision drum because like you we know? talked to um the john the owner of pipe dream like way back episode like five yeah like way back and we asked him because he's in that london dairy area where like craft breweries are just blowing up around that right. London Dairy airport area c- to feed Manchester. Mm-hmm. And we said, is it a bad thing with like, with how many craft breweries are coming up and going around you? He said, no, it's the opposite it is the best thing ever. Right. Because it is making it so that we are a place to go to, to get a bunch of craft beer. And even if people are going to go to five different craft breweries, instead of just hanging out at mine, they're coming to London Dairy for craft beer, and they're spending money they, in London Dairy all and they're gonna, day long. And they're going to come right. in, and, yep. and if I get uh, custom drums, I, I might want more custom drums, and it's just a beneficial thing to have. There's that. definitely a big level of what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What is? Um, people are so mixed on the what they consume. So, do you have like either a book, a podcast, a YouTube show, like anything that you have as that you've liked as a resource that you'd recommend to anyone that is doing either specifically what you do in manufacturing drums, or it can be mindset or business or anything for our audience. If you're interested in building drums, a really good, like, you're just going to want to go deep dive into forums. You you want to look at at the weird web results. You're not going to get any clean information on how to build drums. You're going to need to piece it together okay. between a whole bunch of different YouTube videos and a whole bunch of different articles and a whole bunch of different poorly written, terrible spelling forum <laughs> re- replies. Some because, guy's like in his shop and he's exact, writing on exactly, his... Exactly, because those guys have the best info. They're not the best spoken, but they have the best info. They have the best knowledge. So you really, you got to deep dive and get a, get a comprehensive mix when it comes to deciding how you want to build drums okay because the way that i build drums isn't exactly the same way that anybody else builds drums and i feel like most of us who are making our shells by hand are the same way uh the steps might be similar but we all have different inflections you know like it's a it's a different accent we're all speaking the same language with a different accent okay yeah cool yeah so forums, any like specific one that you like that you're I cannot like? Cannot honestly remember. You want you want to Google Coco Jig, K O K O J I G. Um, that'll get you f- your foot in the door. That'll get your foot in the door out. because otherwise you're going to have to buy a f- ten thousand dollar lathe and get three phase power pumped into your house to start building drums. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Coco Jig, you're so going to want a jig. You're going to want to be a jig turner. Trust me. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. All right. Um, Last is just where do people find you? Where do people follow 
Exeter Drumworks at uh, online. Exeter Drumworks, all one word on Instagram. Uh, just search for Exeter Drumworks on Facebook or exeterdrumworks.com. Uh, you can email me at Jeff Beck, J E F F B E C K, at exeterdrumworks.com or exeterdrumworks at Gmail. That all works. Or go on down to uh, or go Exeter. on down to uh, yeah Exeter. Uh, you can go down to uh, sixty Winter Street to uh, Exeter Station Studios. Uh, but call me first because I don't have a sign up yet. Fair, <laughs> sick. I'm probably gonna head down there at some point oh, if it's yeah. getting more finished and check out. I'm it's interested really in cool. any creative yeah. spot like that. You should uh, yeah. Even if you're looking for like a small like corner office in in Exeter, you should go go hit up Scott Ruffner about Exeter Station Studios for sure. Yeah. There you have it, guys. That is episode 34 of the Waking Up From Work podcast, where we get to work making work a passion. That is Jeff, an Exeter drum work story. I hope you guys had some fun learning more about making some drums. I think it's super possible that I end up getting a drum from Jeff in the sometime future for my studio to get a unique sound for artists that I work with. By the time the next episode comes out, you will have already hit your Thanksgiving. So I hope everyone out there has a killer Thanksgiving and has a lot of things to be grateful for. I know that I do. This year has been one of the harder years for me as a person, but I think it's also the year that has, I'm more grateful than ever for everything that I do have. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of abundance out there. I'm really excited for 2020 and, uh, and hen there with you guys. So. Thank you guys so much for checking out the podcast. Next week, we're going to hear from a friend of mine, Joe Solo, who is the producer for Macy Gray, Fergie. He's got credits with Michael Jackson, Rick Rubin, Quincy Jones. Awesome producer, awesome person from LA. I met at an Audio Engineer Society convention when I was out there, actually grabbing a bite to eat like outside of the hall in a quiet place. Go figure. So. That shows the power of networking. Joe taught me how to really, really refine a vocal that I work on for my own audio stuff. And I couldn't be more grateful for him. So definitely check out that episode. It will be out next week. Really excited to share it with you guys. Have a killer week. 